everyone, this is Mermaid Faith, and I decided to make another video on my dogs because a lot of people don't understand that having a mutt is just as good as having a um, purebred. I believe that a lot of mutts are better than purebreds just because so many purebreds have been um, bred over hundreds and hundreds of years and that has given them a lot of health problems. Newer breeds are okay for not having as many health problems, such as in my last video, the Queensland Healer is still a very new breed. It does not have any um, major health problems yet. Um, as for my number one dog, she is a Boxer Rottweiler mix, which is a very different combination. Um, I did a lot of research on both breeds before I um, got her. I didn't know a lot about the breed, so I thought I would tell you guys about it, about the more ancient history about um, Boxers and Rottweilers and what they were used for. If my dog would wake up, that would be really great, but I highly doubt she will because I even have treats and she won't get up. So I guess I'll start with the Boxer. Her mom is a Boxer and Boxers were bred in kind of the Great Depression area. They were in the 1920s and in the 30s. They were breeding Mastiffs, which if you don't know what a Mastiff is, it is a very huge breed of dog. They bred it to actually hunt and kill bear. That's why it's so huge and powerful of a dog. And they wanted to make a smaller version of this great hunting dog. So they got the Boxer. They didn't actually name it the Boxer until they realized that while they were having these types of dogs, they actually used their front hands as if like a Boxer. They will um, push things away and use their front feet when they're playing or even if they're fighting. Um, they, I guess they don't realize that they don't have hands, but they try to, so they got the nickname Boxer, and then finally it stuck that this dog is going to be called a Boxer because it uses its front feet when most dogs don't. Um, they were going to be bred as for hunting, just like the Mastiff, but it turns out that during that era, they um, couldn't use them as for hunting because a lot of people had them more closer to small towns and stuff like that, and they needed something that was strong, like the Boxer, but small enough to pull things. So they actually would pull carts, and if you look up um, what boxers were bred for, the number one picture showed on Google and other search engines will actually show you them pulling carts for grocery stores and stuff. They would have meat carts filled in this little cart and you'd see this little muscular dog just pulling the cart for people. That's what they intended to be used for after they found out that they aren't exactly for hunting anymore because of how they were bred. Um, I guess on a down note, they do get really prone to anxiety because of how they were bred because that's, this is a older breed. So they're really prone to anxiety, separation anxiety, and I honestly think they um, get, um, I'm losing my mind. Um, boop, boop, boop. Not only separation anxiety, but also they get very, um, like, kind of sidetracked all the time. It's not necessarily a bad thing. They're just very alert. They just want to try to focus on everything at once when they really can't. So it looks like they're not paying attention to you or to someone else, but they really are. And that's pretty much about it on boxers. People don't realize that they do have floppy ears, though. People cut their ears to be straight and on a point on both sides of their head. It makes them look more intimidating, even though they're really not that intimidating. They don't have a very strong jaw. It is a strong jaw, but it is not one of the strongest. They can be super soft with their mouth, even though it doesn't look like it. They have a very smushed and very small jaw, um, but they can pick up stuff very soft, like a hunting dog. So I believe that if you were to train a boxer, it could be a hunting dog, because that was the purpose for it being bred, was to be a hunting dog. 
um, but they are extremely smart. You just have to make sure that you have patience to teach them because they do want to focus on everything all at once when they really can't. Um, the other thing is my dog's um, father was a Rottweiler. Rottweilers were bred to be a protective dog. Um, but before they were just used to protect people, they were actually a herding dog, which people really don't know because this was mostly used in Europe. People would buy a Rottweiler to herd their sheep, to guard their sheep from other animals that would try to get them. The downside to this, which most people train their Rottweiler or other breeds of herding dog not to, but such as a Queensland healer, like in my last video, a healer will purposefully heal. It will get at the back end of the animal and get the back legs or the rump. If the animal is too small, it will try to get the back end of the animal. Whereas Rottweilers, they're called a header. They purposefully go for the head. They try to intimidate the animal by going straight at it, which it has a downside if the animal isn't trained correctly. It will tear up the animal's face. As for my dog, um, she is kind of trained. We have some pigs out here, and if you don't know, pigs can be really aggressive if you get in their way. They are a very powerful animal. It doesn't matter how small they are. Even a pot belly can be very aggressive if you don't train them right and stuff. Um, she did tear up one of the pig's um, face just a little bit. It wasn't too bad, but the pig wasn't backing down, and we told the dog to back down, but she did not because she, I don't know if she just thought she was better than the pig or what, but she finally learned her lesson, and she needs to back down when we tell her to back down. Um, I guess I'll show you Gobi if she'd get up. Gobi, up. Come here. Get up. Get up here. Come here. Gobi, come here. Sit. Thank you. Here, look. I got a treat. I got a treat. Eat the treat. There you go. Okay, my dog is sad. Um, so yeah, once they came over to America, they were definitely more used as a protective dog. People would have them if they thought they needed um, to have a dog that looks intimidating to scare people off. A lot of people don't know that Rottweilers are actually the number one strongest bite force for domestic dog breeds. A lot of people think it's pit bulls or um, American Terriers. It's actually the Rottweiler. A Rottweiler and a pit bull can both lock their jaw, which means if they bite down that they can literally make it to where they cannot release. They will keep a hold on it until someone tells them to come off or until they get off. Um, for my dog, I feel like she has a lot more of a um, boxer mouse. She does pick up things very um, softly, and she will go and she plays with puppies, and I actually take her to work, and she plays with toddlers all day. She is very fond of toddlers, which is probably the both breeds. Both breeds are very animal, um, like the nanny animal breeds. They both want to care for someone's family, even though the boxers are a lot more high strung than Rottweilers. Rottweilers and boxers are both a family oriented breed. They want to please the family. They're not really a one person. They can be a one person owner, but they will most likely fall in love with the whole family and be for the whole family dog. <sighs> Goby, can you sit up, hon? Goby. This is a video about you, and you won't even show your face. Get up. Get up. Sit. Good girl. Just sit. So this is Goby. She's got a double ear infection right now, so she really doesn't want to be part of a video. But as you can tell, she is very sweet. She's a very much a mama's dog. She definitely just wants to go with me everywhere, even when she can't. She tries to sneak in my car when I go to work sometimes, but sometimes she can come to work with me, so it's not a big deal, but she just tries to sneak in everywhere I go. Why are you talking so loud? Um, she does talk a lot. She makes these weird little grunt noises because of all the excess skin she's got here from both the Rottweiler and the Boxer. 
Um, she definitely has the boxer coloring, though, because boxers get this fawn with the black around them. Her skin is actually black. You can't really tell, but she is very tired, apparently, today. She's just not feeling too good. But she's still a good girl. She went to work with me yesterday. She, She's very good with um, children. She actually, yesterday, I was watching... A group of little kids and they were kind of being rambunctious but they weren't hurting anyone or anything but she just had to stand there and watch she didn't even want to play with them she just laid right there in front of the area that they were playing in and just watched them um, you are such a little lazy dog today but my point on uh, um, mutts being better than pure breeds is I've had a lot of experience. My family loves to get a lot of pure breed dogs and they don't last as long as mutts do. I mean, don't get me wrong, a lot of pure breeds do last for a lot of years and a lot of their illnesses or their deformities that they are born with because of being pure bred can be fixed. But personally, I like mutts because mutts can be multiple personalities from multiple different breeds that are in in this one dog that makes them better than a pure breed dog. As for um, Gobi, an example would be that she looks intimidating. I take her places with me and a lot of people are too scared to come up to her, too scared to pet her. I am okay with that personally because I don't want people just rushing up to pet my dog. I would like them to ask and then as soon as they ask they realize, oh, this dog is very sweet. She just sits there and she lets you pet her. It doesn't matter what age you are. I've had a two-year-old come up to her. I've had a one-year-old come up to her and they just do the little baby pats, which is pretty much like abuse for a dog. They just like smack them all over and she will just sit there and take it because she knows that that's the only way they know how to give affection. So she still licks them and gives them kisses and then the little babies laugh and stuff. The other thing is that if she does need to be protective, she is, just like um, the Rottweiler in her. We did have some people come up to our house, not necessarily uninvited. I knew they were coming, but um, I guess my dog didn't realize they were coming. So they came pretty early in the morning, and it really scared my dog. And she went out there, and she stood on our porch, and she did not back down. And finally, I got out there on the porch, and I told her that it was okay. It's you know, people I know, you kind of got to talk to your dog sometimes to kind of have them calm down to realize when they're really that strongly protective against, like, against other people for your owner. As for me, she is, she tries to be really protective for me and for if I'm at work with the little kids, she tries to be very protective for them too. This is not a downside to me. This is a positive side. A lot of people see it as a downside because they're afraid that this dog might snap or something. This dog will not snap. Um, as long as you train this dog right, there is nothing wrong with your dog. Any dog that is a protective dog breed is a great dog. My, um, Mine and my boyfriend's Queensland Healer is actually learning to be protective and he is finally learning the pretty much the phrase no or to back down because he is a healer. They are an extremely protective breed too, mostly protective towards animals coming at us just because that is what they're bred for is to heal animals. Um, but he is protective of when other people come up, he will bark at them and we have to tell him no or it's okay. And then he will slowly back down. So I guess for my ending, I am going to show you I'm not a trainer for dogs or anything, but I have trained Gobi, which is my Rottweiler boxer, to do quite a few tricks, and they're not super hard to do, um, but people will realize that it doesn't matter if your dog is high strung like a boxer, you can still train them. Actually, Gobi's mom is probably one of the smartest boxers I've ever met. She is extremely driven just to please you. She just wants to please you and do as what you're saying. Um, her dad, on the other hand, is not. He's He hasn't been trained as well as her mom, but that's okay. He still is family-orientated. He still wants to be 
the protector of the family and keep all the kids in the household safe, which is probably the number one priority for a dog that big is you want to make sure that he he is taking care of his family as the number one priority. And so I think I will show you some of Gobi's tricks real quick. So I'm going to move this to where you can see what's going on here. Maybe. There we go. Okay. Gobi, come here. Come here, Gobi. I got treats for you. Come here. Come. Come here. Thank you. Come here. Sit. Gobi, come here. Come here. Oh my goodness, you are so lazy. Come on. Okay, sit. Good girl. Here's your treat. You can have it. You dork. Okay, shake. Good girl. Here you go. Okay, ready? Lay down. Good girl. Stay. Okay, Gobi, ready? Ready? See the tree? Roll over. Gobi. Roll over. All the way. All the way. Good girl. Good girl. There you go. Good girl, Gobi. Now get up. Up. Good girl, sit. Thank you. What a good girl. So as you can tell, she's a very smart dog. She's very lovey right now. Um, she's extremely smart. It did take her quite a while to teach her to do a few of those just because um, she is part boxer. They do try to focus on everything at once and they can't. Um, yes, I know you want kisses. I know. Um, that was gross. <laughs> but... Um, mutts are definitely a good alternative if you cannot afford a pure breed because mutts are just as smart or smarter in some cases as pure breeds and you just have to be more careful when buying pure breeds because of all the problems that they can have. So I guess that will be my uh, um, show for today because Gobi is already laying down again and ready to take another nap, but I guess that's fine when you're sick. I mean, I guess you want to take a lot of naps, so that will be the end for today, and hopefully next time I will get the bearded dragon out. She's just not very enthusiastic right now because we put her back on to crickets and salads, and she wants some squash and stuff too, but I can't get her squash right now, so she's kind of being a little dramatic queen right now. Anyways, see you later, guys.